So in the last few segments, we've focused on how to communicate with the computer that we have date information and how to help the computer format that information in a way that we as human beings expect dates to work. If we have automated data, we might also have time information. When a sensor is sitting out or a GPS collar is collecting location information, it often records that piece of data, not only what day that data was collected, but at particu what particular time that data was collected. And so now we have date and time information that we have to tell the computer how to extract and work with. And so for our next segment, what we're going to do is explore how do we work with times as well as dates, especially when they come potentially all bundled into one piece as one piece of information. Let's open up our studio and explore our other data set that I gave you to download, which has date time information. So let's load up the other data file that I gave you for class today. Call that, oops, date time. And we will read it in using read.csv. That's the date time file. Strings as factors equals false. Let's run this line and let's click on this file and see what we have. The other file that I had given you was providing the average air temperature for each day. But that data is actually coming from weather stations and sensors that are collecting that information on a much finer scale. This is the quarter hour version of that data, which means that it is registering the air temperature every 15 minutes. If we look in that date column now, which is called date time, what we see is we have not only a date, which is in the ISO date format, but then we have this add-on here, which is the time. And so now we have to be able to tell the computer not only how to extract the date out of this, but also how to extract this time information. So how do we do that? Let's start by seeing what happens when we provide this type of information to our as date function that we've been playing with over the last few segments. Going to return to our R script, we'll just do what we did before. This will be our as date date. And I will feed it the date time column from our current file. Run this. No errors, so that's good news. But let's see what it provided. So let's look at this. Date, date, and run, just so that it'll display down in the console window. And what we see is that it had extracted the date portion of that information, but it dropped the time. And that's because as date really is just for dates. And so we're going to need a different approach for dealing with a combined date time information. Dealing with combined date time information is going to require us using a different set of functions that will require us to talk a little more in detail about exactly how is the computer understanding how to work with dates. Up to this point, I've basically said it's magic. We tell it to work with a date and it works with it as a date. Uh, but there's something going on underneath the hood that's really important for us to understand right now. So let's talk about what's been happening when we convert dates that are being stored as characters into these as date objects. Let's say we give a computer a date. Two thousand one, January thirty first. And so it has to extract these pieces of information and store them in a way that it knows what the difference is between this date and that date. And in particular, it needs to be able to understand how much time has passed between these two dates. And so in this case, we have a day. So how does the computer know that there's a single day between January 31st and February 1st. There's no simple way for it to just do math on it. All of the months differ in how many days there are. 
it has to be able to have a very simple way of doing these types of calculations. And one of the ways that computers do this is by converting this date information into something that's very easy for it to store and work with. And the way it does that is by choosing a reference point and then storing information about how far from this reference point a particular date is. As date is doing this under the hood, and it chooses as its reference point, January 1st, 1970. And so when you give R a date, for example, our date of January 1st, 2001, when we convert it to an as date object, what it's doing is then calculating the number of days that have passed between January 1st, 1970 and January 31st, 2001. And then that's the information it is storing. It's not storing the month and the day and the year. It's storing that number of days. And then when we ask for it to be displayed, this information to be displayed, it reconverts it back into a date format for us to be able to work with and understand. Right about now, you might be wondering, well, what happens if the date is before 1970? Anything before 1970 is a negative number of days from that reference date, and anything after 1970 is a positive number of days from that reference date. There's no reference time in the as date function, which is why it doesn't know what to do with the, that time information. So instead, we use another function that is able to add that time component to that reference date. The two functions that can do that are POSIX CT and POSIX LT formats. The main difference between these two formats, the POSIX CT and the POSIX LT, is how they're storing that date time under the hood. POSIX LT is doing something very similar to what AsDate is doing, except instead of counting the number of days from a reference date, it's counting the number of seconds from a reference date time. And that reference date time is January 1st, 1970, right after midnight. And it's counting the number of seconds, which is the main difference from AsDate, which is counting the number of dates. POSIX LT is very computationally efficient. It works well if you're dealing with a lot of date times, big databases. There can also be some benefits to it. If you are needing to have dates converted into numerics for analysis reasons. POSIX CT is doing something that's a little different. It is less computationally efficient because of how it's storing the information, uh, but it is also more human friendly uh, as a result. It is taking each one of those pieces of date information, so month, day, year, hour, minute, second. It breaks those apart, and then for each one of those individual pieces, it has a reference for year, it has a reference for month, it has a reference for minute, it has a reference for second, and it keeps stores those distances from those individual component references. This might seem a little abstract. Let's go to our studio and see for ourselves exactly how R is storing this date time information under the hood when we convert things into POSIX CT versus POSIX LT. Before we start playing around with the dates in our data file, let's do something simple with an example date first. So let's set up a test date, test date time. We'll just make it 2015, 10, 19. We'll make our lives easier and just go ahead and give it the date as part of an ISO format. And then we'll give it a time. Run that so that gets stored. Let's start by just converting this to as date, just like we've been doing before, to see how as date handles something that has this time component tacked on. So we'll do an as date, date time. And we'll just use that as date function and give it our test date time. Ooh, that was almost bad. And we'll run this and see what happens. Okay, no errors. So giving it a date with a time attached to it doesn't cause any obvious issues up front. 
But if we look at what as date did with our date time, we'll see that things didn't quite go as we had hoped. So let's look as at as date date time. It very successfully pulled out the date component, um, but it just drops the time. So anything that is not part of that ISO date, it's gone. So one of the things we can do is look at not just how as date is being shown to us, which is this format that it, we can see down in the console right here. We can also ask the computer to show us how it is seeing this date. So we're going to do that by typing in unclass and giving it our as date date time. So when we ask R how it is seeing this date, it says, I see this date as 16,727 days since January 1st of 1970. POSIX CT is going to do something similar. POSIX CT is going to give us something similar, except that it'll be the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 started. So let's convert our date time into a POSIX CT and look at that. So I'm going to create a CT date time and we're going to now tell R that we want this converted into a POSIX CT. And give it our test date time. Let's run this. And now let's look at what it gives us back. Down on the console, we can see that it now recognizes that time information in addition to the date information. So if we look to see what R thinks our new CT date time is, what we see is that it's now telling us not that this is a date, but that this is a POSIX object, which has specific rules for how it should format and work with this information. If we want to look to see how the computer is storing our date time information, we will unclass it just like we did with as date and run it. And what we see now is this even larger number. And again, this is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 started. Now that we have a good feel for what CT date time and as date are doing. Let's see what POSIX LT is doing and how that differs under the hood from these other things. Let's create a new variable, LT date time, and we will run it through POSIX LT. So the function as POSIX LT will convert our test date time to the POSIX LT format. And now let's look at what it has generated. That looks exactly like what the POSIX CT version gave us. But this is the format that it's showing us. This is the nice, pretty, it's like, oh, a human wants to see this. <laughs> but if we look under the hood, so we'll unclass this and information is being stored very differently. And so I'm going to scroll up here so we can see at the very beginning all the different pieces of information that are being stored in this, L, this POSIX LT format. That the number of seconds uh, is being stored as the number of seconds from the top of the minute. In this case it's zero. The number of minutes into the hour. Uh, the number of hours into the day. So what day of the month is that information coming from? What month of the year? How many years since 1900? And that's 115 years. And then it stores some other information so that we can, it, it can portray other aspects of the date that we don't often think about, but sometimes can be important. So this is uh, the weekday. So what day of the week? This is what day of the year, so uh, 365 days in a year, more or less. This information was recorded on the 291st day of the year. So as a human being, having this information stored in this way can be very useful at times because I can write simple computer code that asks it to extract these pieces of information that I may need to calculate something that I want to be able to analyze or summarize or display.
But as you can see, that's a lot of different pieces of information that are being stored. So if you have a giant database, this is going to slow things down. All right. Now that we have a basic understanding of what POSIX, CT, and LT are doing, let's take the data set that I uh, signed us for class with the date times in it and convert them into POSIX CT. So let's start by just applying what we did with our test date time to our data file and see what happens. What I'm going to do is create a new column in our data file to store our converted date time information. And I'm going to use POSIX CT to convert our character date time into a date time object. So let's do that. Our file name. I'm going to name our new column uh, CT date time. Use the POSIX CT function. Tell it that the column I want converted is called date time. And let's run this. Let's look at our data file. And what we can see is that unlike our example, this didn't work. And the reason that this didn't work is that the format in this file is not exactly the default format that POSIX CT is expecting. So just like with as date, if our date was already in an ISO format, as date would take it and we didn't have to tell it any particular information. The same thing is true for POSIX CT. If our date time is in the default format, we don't have to tell it anything. But our date time is not in the, in the default format. The default format has a space where this giant T is. And so we need to be able to tell POSIX CT that there's a T in there and that after that T is where the time information is. So let's go do that. Switch back to our script. And so just like what we did with as date, where we had a format argument, we're going to do something very similar with POSIX CT. All we're going to do is retype what we typed before, but we're going to add an argument at the end. So data time, the CT date time column, POSIX CT, giving it our date time column in data time. I'm going to format the screen here so you can see everything all at once. Good. All right. So after the comma, I inserted a format. Just like what I did with the as date, I'm going to be very specific by telling it where the different pieces of information are and what the general format of this character string I'm giving it that contains my date time what all the little pieces are. Let's look at our date time real fast. So our date time starts with an ISO format, but we still need to specify that. What we're gonna do is tell it that it has a four digit year, a dash, a numeric month, a dash, and a day. And then we're gonna give it the big T. And then just like with the date, we're going to tell it where the hour and where the minutes are. Go back to our screen here and give it the percent Y for a dash, a percent M dash, percent D. We type the T straight in. And now for hours and minutes, we use capital H. We have a colon in our time, a percent capital M for the minutes. And this whole thing now tells the computer exactly where each piece of information it wants is and what these characters that it can ignore, where they are in relationship to these different pieces of information. And now we run this, and let's look at our data file. And we can see now we have our dates and our times all being stored in our CT date time column, just like we hoped they would. So we're at the end of this segment. What I'd like you to do before you start the next segment is just do the same conversion we just did with POSIX CT, but with POSIX LT. And then for our next segment, I'm going to show you the Lubridate package, which takes all of these fundamentals that we've been learning about dates times and wraps a lot of it in a user, more user-friendly package.